Hey everyone. So, um, we have a lot to talk about here. I truly thought I wasn't going to have much to say about the Switch Pro, although I did mention we were going to hear a bunch of information and leaks uh, rather soon with all the dev kits out there. But what's interesting is that what happened in the last, I don't know, day and a half or so is that Digital Foundry came out with you know their own Digital Foundry Direct, which they have turned from being like this once in, you know, once in a while podcast unveiling of a bunch of information and do what they are now doing as like a weekly just standard gaming podcast and at the very beginning of their latest digital foundry direct they talk about the nintendo switch pro new switch new oled switch as they call it because obviously pro is just a moniker we've tossed out there there's nothing really official that calls it a pro it's just kind of a a way for us to quick reference what this system is you know that we agree on what we're referencing here that you know this is it an upgraded model of switch now what's interesting about the remarks they made and why people started taking them to heart is that digital foundry has actually been correct about a lot of things with switch in the past from games to the light model to the original switch because digital foundry is an arm of Eurogamer, so they have real sources uh, that have proven to be correct in the past. So when Digital Foundry says something, people tend to take it as fact. Now, what's interesting is that Digital Foundry didn't present what they said as a fact, but people are taking it as such because sometimes in the past, Digital Foundry will basically create speculation around something that later ends up being true, probably because they don't want to leak given information or they're not confident about the information they have yet, so they'd rather speculate rather than say, hey, we have sources that said X, Y, and Z. So what did Digital Foundry say? Well, they essentially said that, well, yes, a 720p OLED screen, probably true. 4K output, eh, well, I mean, technically, Tegra X1 can output a 4K signal. Uh, so, I mean, it can output 4K you're just not getting 4K gaming, but it is what it is, right? Like technically, they could argue, you know, if you want YouTube in 4K, you want Hulu in 4K, X1 can already do it. So maybe that's just what it is. And maybe it's just literally unlocking the Tegra X1 to enable that 4K output. Because here's what they believe. They went off a leak of an operating system from a dev kit that happened last year and was broken down. And factually, inside the operating system was a reference to Alula, A-U-L-A, which is a currently unknown switch soc but in the breakdown of alula it looks like it is the exact same tegra x1 with the same 16 nanometer process they have used on the version 2 switch the red box switch and that obviously it is you know similar specs now what's interesting about that is that while they say they think this is the chip that is being used in a switch pro basically making the switch pro the exact same system as the current one just with a new screen uh, that kind of set the world a tizzy because none of the rumors line up with this given information. And this information was technically debunked a while ago in terms of it being what the Switch Pro is. But because Digital Foundry brought it up and because they have some clout behind their name, people are all in a tizzy about it. Well, we have some debunking information along with actual new info, real info, not rumors. We're going to start with the rumors and then we're going to end with the legit info that comes off what NVIDIA is actually doing and is publicly verifiable. It is crazy what's coming. You guys should be really excited because it looks like whether it's the Pro or a next-gen Switch, there is some version of a Switch coming at some point that is insanely powerful in comparison to the current Switch. I... I, I didn't even believe it until I saw it myself. But before I get into that, we are giving away a copy of Monster Hunter Rise and two $20 Nintendo Switch, uh, PlayStation, or Xbox gift cards. So three total winners this month. Head down to the description or the pinned comment to enter. Let's go. Let's get into this. All right. So first up, Brainchild is an insider uh, over at Reset Era. And while you don't have to like Reset Era, Brainchild's been verified not only by the Reset Era mods, but he's been correct on a lot of stuff in the past. He is a VFX artist um, and consultant, and he has had several direct contacts, which appear to be with NVIDIA, um, about their inner workings with different SOCs and different chips. He's talked about things beyond uh, Switch SOCs in the past, but he's been right on everything he's talked about Switch SOCs in the past as well, about when they're being developed, when they're releasing, all this stuff. So 
one, he has directly refuted what Direct Digital Foundry said, saying that, hey, what they're talking about and what was in that speculated thing, that is not the SOC that's in development or in these dev kits. In fact, logically, you would not need new dev kits just for a new screen. A new screen would not change anything for development purposes. So to be clear, the fact that dev kits are out there, and everyone agrees that dev kits is out, are out there, including Brainchild, that, hey, look, even Digital Foundry said something about dev kits being out there. If dev kits exist, why would they need to exist for the same chipset? Because they might run at slightly higher clocks, maybe? Mm, mm, you could just unlock current dev kits for that. They wouldn't need new dev kits. So, yeah, like they could literally just release a new profile that allows for higher clocks. Like, they, they wouldn't need brand new dev kits so let's get into uh what brainchild has to say on this and then we're going to get into some of the factual information we know now based on nvidia themselves he has stated that the switch soc specs are actually in flux and this dates back into last year uh, but it is possible the chip has hit taped out mode already or will within the month um and uh you know you could say this given the number of third parties that have dev units uh but he claims that at the time he got this information, the chip wasn't taped out yet. Now, to understand what he means by taped out, uh, I just want to give you an analogy. Like, taped out isn't something that technically exists anymore. It deals with magnetic strips and, and stuff in the past. But to give you an idea of what taped out means, uh, it's kind of like a video game going gold. The video game isn't printed on a disc or cartridge or available in a digital download format for mass consumption. It might not even be fully playable on a given system. But the final product is so-called complete. So for a chip, this would mean the design is finalized and ready for the tools to be made for, to go into mass production. So essentially, the chip itself, the design and the specs and everything are finalized, and then they're just going to wrap up the tools at manufacturing level and then begin mass production. Uh, Bloomberg obviously has previously talked about this, about the 720p rigid OLED panel, seven inches. Also, we know that Nate Drake has put out there that, Hey, look, he knows about some exclusive games coming, at least one exclusive third party game and the dev kits exist. So these are just some other sources talking about switch pro, um, Zomble or zombie, I guess, as he, as he goes by, who's also an insider has noted that he has heard all dev units currently are not final spec but rather hack together systems with various spec profiles. Brainchild agrees with this, uh, and his people in position, which appear to be at NVIDIA, are telling him that dev kits are likely sent out, but aren't final specs. So it's kind of like a, hey, look, you know, he's not 100% sure that dev kits are out there, but what he's hearing, it sounds like they're definitely out there. Uh, and it says, if that's the case, however, both Zombo and Brainchild are correct, and Brainchild has nailed all of his SOC stuff in the past. It's hard to believe that it's the same take or X1 chip, as you wouldn't need to tape that out. Um, so digital foundry's kind of expectations are irrelevant. Now to defend digital foundry and that Alula listing in the OS, one thing to remember is multiple times throughout a given system's lifespan, the original chip gets replaced. Uh, they replaced it once already. And the only reason we even know about that replacement and got a red box switch is because of the switch light. If the switch light didn't come out and all they did was just update the chip, which they did originally to stop hacking. We went to even got what's called a version two switch. It would have just happened under the radar and Nintendo would have never said a word about it. But because they were advertising the switch light, they were able to kind of sneak in and mention that, Hey, we have a version two of switch. So Alula can be can be real. They could they could literally be putting new Tegra X1 chips in the current Switch model at some point, but it would just be you know updated securities and and stuff like that. It's not going to be like you know giving you better boost clocks or anything like that. So Alula could still be right, could still be true. It could just be another revision of the same hardware right now, uh, made for security purposes. Again, the Xbox 360 had like four or five different chips in it. PlayStation 3 had seven different chips, believe it or not. Uh, PlayStation 4 ended up with four different chips. So again, this is not uncommon. We usually don't hear about these chip revisions. We're only hearing about it because people are really interested in what the Switch Pro is. So they're digging into things that might not have anything to do with it. All right, moving on. Brainchild does note that while the tape out could be soon, 
it could be as late as early 2022. So he doesn't think it'll be any later than obviously uh, spring of next year. He just feels it will be sooner because his sources don't really tell him about Switch SOC stuff until it's closer to being finalized. For logistical reasons, if the DLSS rumors are true, which have come from multiple sources, a Tegra X1 is technologically incapable of running DLSS in any form, even if they attempted to run it with RT cores. Maxwell slash Pascal architecture is incapable at a hardware level to work with that technology. So any thought that, you know, they could use a Tegra X1 and attack DLSS on is just not possible. So I think at this point we can just dismiss. Switch Pro is not using a Tegra X1. All right. Brain Child is confident the new SLC will go into mass production in July. Uh, and this actually lines up with the same timetable that we know the 720p OLED panels are going to mass production. So that would actually line up to potentially release this holiday or early 2022. Because again, it, it, it could release late this year. Might be more realistic to expect a, another March 3rd kind of release. Um, that's kind of the timetable we've been working with ever since that Bloomberg article came out. Uh, Brainchild confirms the info he has flies in the face of any thought process of an X1 Plus refresh. Instead, leans in the Nate the Hates claims of 4K and DLSS. That's just kind of what we know from Brainchild, who is basically saying, look, there's a new SOC in the works. All right. It's for Switch. It is not a, a Tiger X1. Dev units are out. Dev units don't have finalized specs. Nintendo's still playing around with the specs. They were playing around with it last year. They still might be playing around with it this year. And let's get into why they're playing around with it and what this chip could actually be because this is this is crazy. So this comes from Dr. 81. If you don't know who Dr. 81 or Dr. 81, however he prefers to be called, goes by, the dude is a youtuber that has almost no following and it's kind of sad because he's really good at snooping hiring pages uh you guys should really check him out link to his channel you should subscribe to him he's all over these hiring stuff almost every video he makes is about a hiring post somewhere that gives info uh that you know people are just not paying attention to because most consumers and youtubers to be fair are not snooping linkedin they're not snooping different websites to try to see what the hell is going on and his information that he finds almost always ends up being accurate because guess what it's direct information from the actual companies it's not you could speculate from the information but this is direct information okay this isn't rumors okay you get the speculation is one thing but the factual information it's not a rumor. So here's where we're getting to non-rumor information. This comes from hiring posts from NVIDIA on LinkedIn. Holy shit. Let me tell you something. This is one of the most exciting things I've read about Switch Pro to date. And it is something that really has my heartstrings tingling. I, I, I'm ready to just like learn how to play a violin right now uh, for all the haters out there that are trying to say that this, this Switch revision isn't going to be anything major. So here we go. Uh, NVIDIA is hiring a Senior Verification Engineer, SOC, System on a Chip. Um, what's interesting about this position is uh, it, it says that you know the position is going to verify the world's most powerful SOCs for use in self-driving cars gaming consoles and other automated machines it's notable it's notable nvidia doesn't have any other gaming consoles the nvidia shield tv which someone might bring up is actually a competitor with the apple tv that happens to be able to game they don't consider it a gaming console they don't market it as a gaming console they just say gaming is part of an overall multimedia faceted device it is directly trying to give an alternative essentially to apple tv which also can game by the way so uh yes that is that is the target anyways of that they don't call it a gaming console they don't call it a gaming console internally anymore they stopped using the nvidia shield as a gaming console concept back before switch came out switch is now factually the only gaming console that nvidia is involved in production in so this post naturally has to do with a, a switch of some type all right now okay so they're hiring someone to to work on an soc what what is it okay cool we already know a new soc is in the works so what does this tell us well the post itself links to a blog post from nvidia about orin orin is tech that is slated to release next year for smart cards. Already been announced. Already been announced. I want to put this in perspective. Orin. Oh, Orin's a beast. All right. 
So you had the original, you know, Parker, uh, also Tager X1 kind of stuff going on, um, which it, the, technically Parker is a slightly new model, the Pascal model, but whatever. Then they had the Xavier model. Okay, that that is using the Volta GPU, something that people thought, oh, maybe they're using the Xavier model. It's been out for a little bit, can hit about 1.3 teraflops. Um, you know, that that could make sense in some way, although DLSS 1.0 isn't very good. Um, DLSS really didn't start mattering until 2.0, which happened on the new Ampere GPU line. But here's the thing. Orin is a beast, okay? It has 12 arm hercules cpu cores these are some of the best arm mobile chip cores available okay 12 of them switch currently uses four cores on some really old arm processors so imagine newer arm processors the hercules version 12 cores that is what orin runs orin also uses an ampere igpu that's their latest 3000 series of graphics cards, although this is obviously a mobile version, so it's going to be cut back. Uh, we don't know the number of cores or any of that. We do know Xavier was 512 CUDA cores. Parker was 256. Uh, the one in Switch was around the same before it was cut back. So, yeah, it's it, it, it it's going to have a lot of CUDA cores. We just don't know how many. Uh, the NT8 DL Tops is 200 Tops on this. Xavier was 30. Parker didn't really have any at all it's more of a newer technology uh the manufacturing process for orin seems to be seven nanometer possibly eight if samsung's making the chips could be eight uh because they have an eight nanometer process but seven nanometer process does exist so they're saying it's being made with that it has a tdp of anywhere from five watts to 65 watts now the chart you're seeing says 45 it's a bit out of date 65 watts is typically what's listed right now 65 watts is the top end so you're going to get the full 12 cores at full clock speeds the full ipg uh, igpu at full clock speeds at 65 watts now it's notable the nintendo switch itself doesn't use 65 watts okay the nintendo switch does 10 watts in portable 15 watts when docked all right so that's where you get the cut back at 10 the more powerful switch at 15 and even that's cut back from what the uh Tiger x1 is technically capable of so what's going to happen here well, well what's this saying this hiring post is essentially saying NVIDIA is working on an Orin iGPU, an Orin Tegra chip for Nintendo Switch and smart cars and all that as well. And the smart car version comes out next year. Here's an interesting part to kind of make this all the more interesting because people are going to say this isn't possible. One, because it's the latest and greatest tech. And when does Nintendo ever use the latest and greatest tech? Technically, at the time that they decided to go with the Tegra X1 in 2015, that was the latest and greatest tech. Yes, it wasn't the latest and greatest when it came out in 2017, but it was the latest and greatest from NVIDIA, basically, at that point. There really wasn't a point to upgrade at that point to the Parker chip. It wasn't that much better. So, in the end, uh, that was the latest and greatest from the partner that they had made at that time. So, here's the deal. While Nintendo usually doesn't go for the cutting edge, here's what we know. Okay, they are factually hiring someone to work on Orin for a gaming console. The only gaming console they have is Switch. They are not, by the way, Switch isn't going to get 12 CPU cores. Okay, that's not going to happen. It's going to be cut back. That remember that 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 12 CPU core maximum GPU stuff, maximum CUDA cores. That's at 65 watts. It's still going to have a 10 watt profile in portable mode. It's still going to be a 10 watt profile, but at seven nanometers. I mean, you could be talking as much as eight cores. They could easily double the core count of the current of the current switch and run it at better clock speeds because they're on a smaller nanometer process, which has better heat dissipation. Okay. In addition to that, obviously, you're not going to get you know the full GPU cores. They're going to cut that back at 10 watts significantly. But are you going to get double, triple what's available currently on Switch? Oh, easily. Maybe even quadruple. Okay. That's at 10 watts. Now, in dot mode, who knows? That's up to Nintendo and how well their cooling is. If they go with a vapor chamber cooler style, which, by the way, you guys think it's only like Xbox that does it. Most phones these days are using vapor chamber cooling. It's very efficient. Uh, so if they go with an updated cooling design, and we don't know if they're going to do that, but if they did, I mean, they could push the chip in dot mode from 10 watts to 20 or 25, and that could lead to even bigger boosts. We don't know this for sure, of course. That's just pure speculation. We just know that Orin is a chip currently in the works for Switch, and Orin is significantly better. Now, 
there's going to be talks about how there's a chip shortage, right? There's a silicon shortage. How the hell is Nintendo going to get all these new chips made during a chip shortage, during a silicon shortage? Well, I have news for you. Factually, silicon is being prioritized for chips that are going into cars, okay? That's a, just a fact. This Orin GPU is going into cars next year. The Orin GPU or the Orin chip, the Aura Tegra chip is factually being prioritized with silicone at manufacturing. Switch doesn't need the top tier Orin chips. Orin chips are going to have a, a, a creation rate that's going to have a bunch of chips that are binned. They're chips that are just not good enough to meet the spec for the smart cars they are going into, okay? That happens across the board. This happens with 3000 series, 6000 series from AMD, um, CPUs. There's always, they, they have this target that they have to hit performance-wise, and they don't always get there. Those chips aren't just tossed in the garbage. Often, that's when you start to get lower tiers of the chips released. Nintendo is on slate. Once they finalize what they want the targeted specs to be, to get the runoff chips from the car manufacturing. So you can make, oh, we have this chip that's targeting certain specs and certain stuff uh, at the top end for cars. This chip doesn't hit it. We bin it, and it can go to Switch as long as it can hit Switch's target. That is what we're talking about here. If Switch is using an Orin chip that's being prioritized in manufacturing already, that's a benefit to Switch to not fall behind in manufacturing. Now, it doesn't mean they're going to be getting as many chips as the smart cars get. They get the priority because the car manufacturers have bigger contracts with these chip makers. But it is important to note that using the same chip that they are also putting in smart cars is going to give Nintendo some priority in the manufacturing line for some of the runoff chips. So that's that's very important here. Also, Dr. Trey81 did it again and discovered another hiring post at NVIDIA. And this is for a next-gen consoles tool engineer. So specifically hiring someone to make a next-gen console tools for developers to use. These are the tools that enable developers to take advantage of the hardware. And this happens, of course. We know there's a new SOC. We know there's new hardware always in development. Of course, they need a tools engineer to make the tools usable for actual developers on these new chips. But here's the thing. The interesting part is it says it's a graphics profiler featuring NVIDIA GPUs enabling developers to achieve higher and more consistent frame rates. So one of the primary jobs is to take what this chip they're making and enable people to get better frame rates out of it. DLSS, anyone? Which increases frame rates? Remember, DLSS 2.0 isn't like a magic brush fix at the moment. It needs to be patched into different engines. But NVIDIA said they are working on a way for DLSS to have an impact on games, even if the engines don't support it. And one impact it could have is increasing frame rate. Even if it doesn't give the resolution bump without developers having to do anything, but obviously have the frame rate unlocked. Even locked, it could help it like hit that locked frame rate. This is exciting stuff, guys. This is what I'm talking about, where Switch stuff is not stopping. So what can we grand take away from all of this? NVIDIA is factually working on an Orin chip to be used in a Switch. They are making game development tools for that Orin chip. Dev units do exist in the wild, but are not final spec. They're still messing around with spec profiles on it. These likely could be Orin chips in these things, just with different spec profiles. Nintendo trying to lock down what specs make sense for the price point they want to hit with the chips and the power delivery and the battery life, right? There's a lot of factors in play here where Nintendo needs to narrow down what they want. They likely don't want less battery life than the current Switch. Are they willing to put a bigger battery in? There's a whole lot of considerations here. And obviously target price points. Is Nintendo willing to go up to $399? If they're willing to have this at $399, leave the current Switch at, at $299 and the Switch Lite at $200, that gives them three distinct price points with three distinct different types of markets they could be hitting, where Pro is going for the more premium market um, and all that jazz. Now, a lot of you guys might be wondering, why does this matter? Shantura Furukawa, if you guys recall, we talked about this. He put out there that he wants to do something different at Nintendo. Nintendo has a history of having these massively successful systems and then nosediving off a cliff. And he wants to avoid the nosedive. He doesn't want to sit here at the peak of the Switch and just rest. 
And not just rest with game development, just rest in general and let the momentum go away. Switch has all the momentum right now. But that momentum isn't going to last forever, and he knows it. He knows there's always been a cliff, and then the, the, the Nintendo falls right off it, and then has to somehow come up with a new platform that tries to rebuild them back up. He doesn't want to have to do that. He wants to keep Nintendo relatively stable at the top in a similar fashion that Sony has done with PlayStation, where PlayStation always seems to end strong with their sales heading into next gen. Now, I am of mind that when people talk about this Orin chip, it could be for a next gen switch. It might not even be for the Switch Pro. I don't know. But here's what I do know. It's possible that Nintendo isn't looking at Switch as a finite next-gen Switch, a Switch 2, a Switch 3. It's possible that what Shintura Furukawa means by not letting Switch fall off a cliff, not letting Nintendo sales fall off a cliff, is that they're just going to have a continuous, ever-evolving situation like cell phones. Switch Pro, Switch 2. They're never going to call it a new Switch. Like, they might call it a new Nintendo Switch, but, you know, they're not going to call it, like, a new generation of Switch. You know, this is the next generation Switch. You're not going to hear them use the terms next generation. You're going to hear them use terms like premium or, you know, for people with 4K TVs, 4K Switch. You're, you're going to hear them use marketing terms that say, we're not replacing the older Switches, but we are giving you something new. And keep doing this iterative process every four years that could keep Switch relevant for 10 15 years and lead to 200, 300 million sales in the entire Switch family and lead to the most successful gaming console or handheld, whatever you want to consider, maybe both. Definitely the most successful hybrid, but there isn't really that many hybrids out there of all time. That's what Nintendo is looking at right now. And that is a very exciting prospect for the future. So Shintura Furukawa is going to have a different strategy than Iwata had, a different strategy than Kimishima had. He's going to have his own business strategy where he says, look, I've seen this. I've been at Nintendo 20 plus years. I've seen the cliff too many times. Let's stop the cliff. And the best way to do that is during the peak years of a platform, get something new out there. Get something new out there. That's what Sony does with the Slim. Again, they did it with the Light. That's what Sony does with the Pro. Again, Switch Pro. And why have a PlayStation 5 or a Switch 2? Why cut off people? Don't cut them off. Slow transitions. Keep it going. Keep the momentum. Make it so OG Switch owners, maybe they don't want a Pro, but maybe they want the new system that comes out in two or three years from now. You see what I'm saying? Nintendo's positioning themselves. And all of these new SOCs, the DLSS, the 4K, the Orin chip that's factually now in the works for Switch, this is all a movement towards Nintendo creating a more iterative system, not a yearly system, not even in every two years, but every three, four, five years, something new coming out, which feels like a traditional console cycle. Actually, more like every three years because you look at Switch Lite, so probably every three years. Having some sort of new system come out that just keeps the Switch family going until a point that people are no longer interested in Switch. And will that point ever, ever come to realization? I have no idea. For now, 720p OLED possible Orin chip in the future, 1080p OLED, whatever's next after Orin, or maybe an Orin chip that's not as cut back. I'm just saying, the future's bright. Now, this is a lot of information. Really long video. I'm going to let you guys sit there and digest it. I'm still digesting it myself. I didn't realize I was going to have this much Switch stuff to talk about today until I woke up. So you guys have a good day. And I'll catch you in the next video.